Welcome to a new video of reading comprehension skills. This is video number 25. In this video, we are supposed to get the main idea of a text. In order to get the main idea of a text, we need to know what the text is about. What is the thing about the text is moving around? Is it a person? Is it an item? Is it an event? What is it about? And then we need to find the important details about this focus. Okay. And when you have to select a choice that gives the main idea, you have to prove it correct through the details of the text. Before we start reading the text, please pay attention to the first and to the last sentences of this text. Having written the impassioned call to arms letter to the Spanish Americans in 1791, Peruvian intellectual Juan Pablo Vizcardo Gozman is often considered a forerunner to, for the independence movements in Latin America. But Vizcardo's role in history would have remained insignificant were it not for Venezuelan revolutionary Francisco de Miranda, who was handed the unpublished letter after Vizcardo's death. Miranda not only helped circulate the letter, but his edits and footnotes to the text position Miranda as a central figure in the text creation. Okay, what is the main idea of the text? Actually, what is the text about? Is it about the letter? Is it about the two people who are mentioned in this text? What is it about? So the first sentence says, that having written the impassioned call to arms letter to uh, the Spanish Americans in 1791, Peruvian intellectual Juan Pablo Vizcardo Gozman is often considered a forerunner for the independence movements in Latin America. We have just talked about the phrases, using phrases in uh, language skills video number 21. And we said that sometimes we start with an, a participial phrase and then the word directly after the comma is the word that is modified by this phrase. So when I say having written the impassioned call, that's the name of the letter or letter to the Spanish Americans, who wrote this letter? Yes, Peruvian intellectual Juan Pablo Vizcardo. Look at the last sentence. Miranda not only helped it circulate the letter, but his edits and footnotes to the text position Miranda as a central figure in the text creation. So who's the original writer? That uh, this person, Vizcardo Gozman. Okay, but what about Miranda? His notes, and he held it in circulation, the letter. What does it mean, circulate the letter? If you remember something like this in biology, when, when you say the blood is circulated, so circulated means distributed, okay? Um, so uh, here, circu circulate the letter means to distribute the letter, to make it widely known, widely published. And then he also had some edits and footnotes. Footnotes means that he wrote some of the notes at the end of the letter. What um, his edits and footnotes do to this is make him as a central figure in the text creation. Made who? Miranda. And Miranda is not the original writer of the letter. So we came to know that there is a letter and the letter is titled Letter to the Spanish Americans. Okay, the writer is Vizcardo Gozman. And then we have Miranda or uh, Francisco de Miranda. That's another person. This person helped it to circulate the letter and he put some edits and footnotes. And those edits and footnotes made him as a central figure in the text creation, as if he recreated the text. Let's have a look at the clues. Having written, as we said, that's a participial phrase. Okay, the participial phrase, okay, it, uh, it talks about writing the letter. 
who wrote this letter? It's Peruvian intellectual Pablo um, Vizcardo Guzman. Very good. So we know now who is the original writer of this letter. What is the title of the letter? Letter to the Spanish Americans. Okay. This person, Vizcardo Guzman, is often considered a forerunner for the independence movements in Latin America. What is the meaning of the word forerunner? Forerunner means a person or an event that comes before or predict an important event. Okay, so for example, you can say that um, a lot of um, conflicts or a lot of uh, problems were the forerunners uh, for the revolution in this country. Okay, so it means that all these problems were predicting that there will be something important happening, which is the revolution. Um, but Vizcardo's role in history, okay, would have remained insignificant. Insignificant means not important. Were it not for Venezuelan revolutionary Francisco de Miranda. This expression, were it not for, means without. So this uh, Vizcardo would remain not important without the role of this other person, Francisco de Miranda. And what did Miranda do? He was handed the unpublished letter. So the letter, uh, which was written in 1791, was not published, okay, until the person who wrote it, Vizcardo, died. And then the unpublished letter was given to Miranda, okay. What did Miranda do with the unpublished? He not only helped it circulate the letter. Circulate here means to distribute and to publish. But his edits and footnotes, he also adds some edits to the letter. He also adds some notes to the letter. And this made him as a central figure in the text creation. So if we have to put some questions in getting the answer. Who wrote the letter? Viscardo, and this is uh, found in line two. How is Viscardo considered? He's considered as a forerunner. What is the role of Francisco de Miranda? He not only helped circulate the letter, but his edits and footnotes uh, to the text made him central figure, and this is found in line four. What does Miranda as a central figure in the text creation mean? What is this last line of the text mean? that he, uh, he was able to recreate the text. And recreate here does not mean from scratch, but at, at least it means that he added a lot to the creation of the letter. Now let's discuss the choices. Choice A, the original authorship of Letter to Spanish Americans, is disputed by contemporary historians. Authorship means who wrote it. The original writer is disputed, means that people are having a conflict about it. People do not agree about it. Is this real? Actually, no, because the first sentence in the text says that having written the impassioned call, um, then uh, after the comma, we have Peruvian intellectual Juan Vizcardo Guzman. So it's confirmed that he is the original writer of the letter. Choice B, the majority of the most eloquently stated arguments in letter to Spanish Americans were written by Miranda. The majority of the things written or the arguments written in the letter were written by Miranda. Actually, no. Miranda just added some edits and footnotes, not the majority of the arguments. Then uh, choice C, Miranda played a crucial role in influencing the content and distribution of letter to Spanish Americans. This choice is correct. Why? Crucial role, it's important, something important in influencing the content by, yes, edits and footnotes that it, that is mentioned in line four, and then distribution the circulation of the letter that is also mentioned in line four. Choice D, 
Letter to the Spanish Americans persuaded many people in Latin America to pursue national independence. It was just mentioned that um, Vizcardo Guzman was a forerunner, okay? That it's not the letter, it's the person who wrote the letter who was the forerunner, who predicted the um, independence in Latin America, but not the letter. Now we'll discuss two important things that we can learn from the passage rather than the content. Number one, the use of the prefix for, F-O-R-E. This is a part that we add before the beginning of some words to mean before, front, or in advance. For example, we all know the verb see. If I put for see, it means to predict to tell about something before it happens. If I say forefather, um, it means a person who was the first to do, to invent, to set up something. If I say Abraham Lincoln was one of the forefathers of the United States, it means that he was one of the founders. He was one of those who uh, established the United States. Foreboding, this is an expectation of an evil future event. So when you have this feeling of um, something bad would happen. The second thing that we need to discuss is the use of this expression, were it not for. Were it not for means without. So when we put it in a hypothetical sentence, we wanted to show the opposite. What does this mean? Look at this sentence. I wouldn't have been hired in this company were it not for my master. Meaning that I was hired in this company due to or because of my master. She wouldn't be here tonight if it were, were it not for her persistence in finishing these tasks. Meaning she's here tonight because she was persistent in finishing these tasks. So one more time, this is an important expression when we use it in reading, or even you can use it in writing guesses. Uh, it means without, and it's a hypothetical uh, case uh, to show the opposite.